Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with classic rice pilaf. That's right, the word on the street is that you stink at making rice. But don't worry, it's not your fault. Actually, hold on. All right, I'm being told it is your fault, but who cares? Doesn't matter whose fault it is. What matters is that your days of sticky, mushy, embarrassing rice are over. So we're gonna start by melting some butter in some olive oil. Hey, I said the method was foolproof, not fat-free. And I'm over medium heat here. All right, so a little bit of butter in the olive oil. As soon as the butter melts and kind of foams up, I'm gonna throw in some finely diced onions and I'm gonna saute that over medium for about seven, eight minutes. All right, I want these to go past translucent and kind of get a little bit golden. All right, so something like that. All right, at that point, you can turn off the heat, set that aside, and it's time to measure out the rice into a deep nine by 13 casserole dish. I'm using a beautiful California long grain rice. So I'm gonna throw a couple cups of rice in the casserole dish, and then we're gonna pour over our sauteed onions along with the butter and the olive oil, and we're gonna give that a good mixing. One of the keys to this technique is that every one of those grains of rice is coated with that mixture. And later you're gonna see that's gonna result in every single grain being separate yet equally delicious. So mix that up when you think every grain has been coated by that buttery, oily onion mixture, stop. And then we gotta heat up some stock, but before we do, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of spice. This is saffron, those are little saffron threads. It probably would have helped if I focused it, but they're super expensive. In fact, right there, I just dropped like $7 worth. And you can read about that on the blog, but it gives it a very nice flavor and aroma and also gives the stock sort of an extra golden color boost. I'm gonna add chicken broth or chicken stock. Of course, you could use store-bought or our awesome homemade chicken stock recipe. So we're gonna dump that in. I'm gonna add some salt. I'm gonna add a little touch of cayenne. And basically we wanna bring this up to a simmer and we wanna simmer it for about five minutes, very gently. We just want that saffron to kind of give up its color. And once that's simmered for five minutes, we're gonna turn off the heat, give it one last stir, and we're gonna quickly dump it over the rice. And then take your spoon and just give it a nice stir to mix it in. Now right here, you may be tempted to do the old tapa tapa. Don't do it, because you could get the old splasha splasha, which could result in a trip to the old emergency room. If anything, a little bit of an old shake a shake it might work. All right, once that's mixed, I'm gonna cover it with heavy duty foil, heavy duty. Not that stuff you get at the dollar store. You want a nice tight seal, so nice and tight all the way around. I'm gonna place that on a sheet pan, just so it's easier to get in and out of the oven. And we're gonna put that in a preheated 350 degree oven for 35 minutes. After 35 minutes, I'm gonna pull it out and we're not done. Just leave it on top of the stove for 10 minutes. Do not touch it. It must rest covered for 10 minutes. Don't peek, don't even think of peeking. Wait 10 minutes, then take the aluminum foil off, take a fork and begin fluffing. And I forget the official culinary term. It's either the fluff and fork or the fork and fluff. You know what, I think I'll do a dream sequence. Actually, you know what, change my mind, Never mind. Anyway, you're gonna take the tip of your fork and just mix it up, mix it up. You're gonna break up all the chunks. When you first start, you're gonna be like, oh no, it all stuck together, but it didn't. As you fluff, every single grain of rice separates from the others, and you're left with this absolutely perfect dish of rice. None of your friends or family will believe you made this rice. If you can measure the rice in stock and set a timer, there's no way to screw this up. And after you've fluffed it and forked it to perfection, you could serve it like that, totally fine, looks awesome. Or a cool trick, you can kind of pack it into ramekins or other cup-like objects, and those grains of rice are so perfect, they will actually hold together, which looks really cool next to some entree that I did not have, which was a bummer because I was starving and this rice looks so good and I wanted like a hunk of meat next to it. But anyway, enough of my personal problems. I really hope you give this a try. Like I said, if you stink at cooking rice, this is for you. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.